Hello, and welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. I'm Krista Burns from Nebraska Library Commission. Uh, Encompass Live is the Library Commission's weekly online event that we do um, every Wednesdays at 10 a.m. Central Time, where we present topics by NLC staff members, uh, guest speakers like we have today, um, and any sort of various, any various topics that be of interest to libraries um, and librarians in the state of Nebraska. This morning, we are, um, have Marty McGee here, who will be talking about the new and improved Library Information Services Program. So, go ahead. Okay. Take over. Thank you, and good morning. I am Marty McGee, and I am one of the instructors in the Library and Information Services uh, Program, as it will now be known. Some of you may have uh, either taken classes under the Library Technical Assistant Program, uh, as it existed previously. <laughs> No, so now you can hear Marty, but you can't <laughs> see me. That's okay. We'll get lined up here again in a second. Anyway, the program, as it officially begins, will start in fall of 2009 from the Central Community College in um, Grand Island, Hastings, and Columbus. So if we can go to our next slide. Um, we have a couple of other people with us on the phone today. The first of these is Dr. Diana Parmley. Diana Parmley is the Dean of Educational Services at Central Community College. And both she and Eric Jones, uh, who is the technical coordinator uh, for our program, have been really instrumental in getting this program off the ground, rounding up the instructors, getting us all on the same page. Uh, helping us work with the online software that we're going to be using as well as some other technical considerations. Um, so uh, with that, I'm going to invite Dr. Parmley to say a few words. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Am I, and I'm, I didn't know if I was doing this right or not. I might tell you, Eric is actually at the Grand Island campus. He's not with us today. He's on vacation. Um, but we were delighted. Eric did the proposal for the new program last summer, and we were delighted to be able to get it. Um, there were problems that students had with enrollment, with sending transcripts. You know, when you go to six different colleges, it makes it a little confusing, and financial aid was also um, confusing to students, and then the fact that some of the courses were offered on a semester time frame and others on a quarter hour system. So we're, we are in a semester system and we're, we're glad to have the program. Um, I think that's all I'll say for now and maybe could answer questions at the end. Mary Young will be with us in a minute, but she's not here right this minute, Marty. Okay, then um, we can go to the next slide. Okay. I have Mary Young's uh, contact information here. Uh, Mary will be the admissions, she is the admissions director for Central Community College and she'll be working with the students who are either bringing in credits or starting in the program initially. So I am sure there may be some questions for her at the end in any case, so we may come back to her slides so sure. uh, people may need the contact information. So let's uh, go ahead and move on. Well, as Dr. Parmelin mentioned, there are some real advantages now as to having this all out of Central Community College. Students will only need to register and apply for financial aid at one institution as opposed to when they may have done it previously at several different institutions. You'll have a single advisor, which will be Mary Young, and all the classes will be offered on one uh, course management system, which is known as Blackboard. Uh, some of you may have experienced uh, classes in Angel or WebCT, uh, some different course management systems, so you don't have to learn a new one each time you take a new class. Uh, next slide. Um, there are two choices in the program, and Dr. Pasco will talk a little bit more about these, but uh, it is a certificate program with 18 hours of coursework, or it can be an associate degree program, which will transfer to the University of Nebraska-Omaha. 
Um, Dr. Pasco also has been instrumental in getting this uh, through with um, Central Community College. And uh, she is not here with us today, but I have asked her to say a few words. So she has produced a video, which we're going to try and load now and uh, have you see. This may take a minute Hello. or two. My name is Dr. Becky Pascoe, and I am the coordinator of the Library Science Education Programs here at the University of Nebraska at Omaha. Thank you, Video Marty. Let me congratulate no, you on this considering video. this journey of the Information all your skills. Program at Central Community College. The program is led by very highly qualified faculty, and you'll proceed through a curriculum that is tied directly to the needs of 21st century libraries. Because of the high quality of the program, all of the courses will transfer into the undergraduate library science program here at UNO. Please contact me if you have any questions about the transfer. And again, let me congratulate you on considering this exciting and meaningful educational journey. Please contact me if you have any questions about the transfer. And again, let me congratulate you on considering exciting and meaningful educational journey. Okay, done. Go ahead. Okay. Next slide. Hi, I'm Carrie Turner and I am wait a minute. Just a second, we're getting back to our presentation. Hello. My name is Dr. Beck. Well, I can go on and talk and a little bit about it since uh, the next one really is going to be a about a class that I teach. Let me congratulate you on considering the next uh, part of our presentation here, I'm just going to tell you a little bit about each one of the classes that are part of the curriculum. Um, I teach the Foundations of Library and Information Services class, and I do this uh, with Carrie Turner. I usually teach it one semester. Carrie Turner will teach it another semester. And this really includes a lot of introductory information, such as histories of libraries, uh, types of libraries, what, what public service means in a library, uh, technology that is becoming part of every library, and some different career options or things that you can do with a library and information services uh, certification. Uh, and if you'll click on Carrie Turner's uh, video, she'll say hi to you here as well. Hi, I'm Carrie Turner, and I am one of the instructors for hi, Library I'm 1010. And I am one of the instructors for Library 1010. It, it was short and sweet, yes. <laughs> but we knew it would be redundant if both of us were talking. And next slide. Uh, cataloging and classification is being taught by Ruth uh, Carlock. Ruth is uh, over at York College and has a lot of great experience working with cataloging and classification. Some of the things that are covered in this class are bibliographic records, subject headings, Dewey Decimal and Library of Congress classification systems, um, MARC records, as well as copy cataloging. And next slide. Uh, well, surprise, surprise, there's my face again. <laughs> I also will be teaching the Reference Resources and Services class. This class will be offered in the summertime, and it includes a lot of the information that you will need as far as reference services goes. Um, we'll be covering information literacy, which is obviously a big topic in all kinds of libraries, public as well as uh, for school media specialists, which includes the big six. Uh, we talk about matching patrons with appropriate tools. Uh, we talk about the reference interview. Um, we also talk about the search process, different kinds of databases, and there are new ones out there all the time, and uh, evaluation of resources because we really think that's probably not only one of the most important things that librarians can do, but we need to be teaching it to our patrons as well. Next slide. 
And this is Patty Birch. Uh, Patty also has provided us with a video, but I will mention her class here, Managing Collections in Libraries and Information Agencies. She'll be working with selection uh, for your collection, evaluating your collection, uh, intellectual freedom, and copyright. And now we'll listen to a video from Patty. Hi, I'm Patty Birch the Library Media Specialist at North Platte High School in North Platte, Nebraska. I'll be teaching LIBR 2150 Managing Collections in Libraries and Information Agencies for the new program being offered through Central Community College. In the semester class we'll talk about a wide variety of different topics related to managing and developing your collection. In addition to getting to know your community or the area in which you work. We'll learn how to select items for that collection. We'll learn how to evaluate the collection, analyze it, and see if there are some things that you need to take out of the collection. We'll also be talking about subjects like intellectual freedom, copyright, all kinds of information. So I hope you'll have a chance to explore these many topics in this 15-week class being offered through Central Community College. Go ahead and back to the next slide. Um, next, we hear from uh, Carol Fiker. Carol has um, uh, been teaching the leadership and management in library and information agencies. Uh, Carol also has some great experience uh, doing this, having been a systems library, regional systems librarian for a number of years, too. So a lot of her class will focus on the policies and procedures that are pertinent to directing any genre of library, and this will include um, things like uh, how you do fundraising, um, how you deal with personnel issues, um, things like that, and working with your boards, of course, too. So uh, this is a great class particularly for folks who are looking to be directors of public libraries. And the last class, or what we call the Capstone Practicum, is taught by Dorothy Willis. Dorothy also has been working in the program for a number of years. And uh, this builds on previous coursework. So uh, you have to take the foundations class first, and you have to take the capstone practicum last. But in this program, the students will have the experience of working in a library, and we will help you hand pick a mentor with whom to work so that you're really getting the experience for the kind of library that you really want to work in. Uh, and Dorothy does a very nice job of, of working with students in this capstone project. Okay, next slide. Oh, yeah. Um, uh, Mary Young, are you back there with um, the Central Community College people? Mary is here. She's coming up. Mary, I'll give you the opportunity to uh, say a few words, and then we're going to open the floor to any questions, if any of the people attending have anything to say. <laughs> Diane is giving me technical assistance. Well, uh, my name is Mary Young, and I would welcome any questions that you might have and would just encourage any students that might be interested to give me a call, and we can work with with them through their program. Uh, a number of students, as you know, could go a couple routes. They could do the certificate program or the associate of arts degree and really willing to work with other institutions for those other courses that are the associate that would apply to the associate of arts degree. So just would welcome any questions and have received quite a number of emails and, and that seems to be maybe the best way to contact me because I'm in and out of the office quite often and I strive for a 48 hour response. So I uh, just would encourage any questions you might have. Mary, do you want to remind us of your email uh, address? Because I don't think it, I had it down there on your last, on um, that last slide. Sure. Can you just sure. give it's it to us verbally? Yes, I'd be glad to. It's M. Young. And so M is in Mary, Y O U N G, at C C C N E B dot E D U. And I would also mention that our library um, information is on our web address, 
and so I would encourage students to visit our web as well and that, that address is www.cccneb.edu slash LIS. On that there, partially. <laughs> right. So it's, it's excuse me, it's www.ccc.edu slash lis. Correct. That will and take you directly. Probably, that will take you directly okay. to the library and information services page that has our our course listings, the rotation of courses. Uh, I believe it has my, it may even have my address out there again, but that is a very, very helpful site. Great. And if you forget that and you want to just go to nowhiringatyourlibrary.org, then you can find it under education and learning. Uh, there will be a link to it. And that would be from the Nebraska Library from Commission From the Nebraska site. Library Commission site. Yeah. And the thing we did, we just changed all our references to L that used to say LTA, because that was the former name of the program, to LIS, the new name. But we left in all the tagging throughout in all the pages, mm -hmm. so that if someone forgets the name of the page they t and they search on library technical assistant or LTA, they can still find it. It'll take them to LIS. And maybe at uh, Central Community College, you could ask your tech people to do that, too, so that if they're searching, they can find it uh, if they search on the wrong thing. <laughs> For those of you who may not recognize her voice, that was Mary Jo Ryan. Typing <laughs> up. <laughs> she just thinks everybody knows her. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> That's okay. Mary Jo works for the Nebraska Library Commission, so she's been very helpful in getting um, this type of promotion going and helping us with the library and information systems. And also in the room here, we have Laura Johnson, who is the training and education coordinator for the Library Commission. So, Laura, do you want to say a few words? We're delighted that uh, Central Community College has stepped up to um, take charge of this program. We think it's a great program. It really fills the need in Nebraska. Mm -hmm. And um, we're just very pleased that um, it's going to be a more cohesive um, experience for the people that go through it. Great. I guess I would invite, if anybody's in the audience who has, has gone through the program or has taken any of the classes, would like to talk about it. I'd like to invite you to speak up now or text chat now. I think it might be useful to others to know a little bit about your experience. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Don't be shy. Mm -hmm. And I'm not sure if we have anybody in the audience who has. We might have. It just depends yeah, on who's at the, at the, the group. On the other side, yeah, right. Um, meanwhile, can we put the video back on? I just want to mention one other thing that we have. Oh. Um, no, I think it's... to send you one uh, so you could contact Mary Young and she would get that out to you. It just tells you a little bit about the program, um, what your options are as far as the certificate versus the Associate of Arts degree and what the course offerings are and when those are offered, fall, spring, or summer. And I should uh, just reiterate that some uh, some of the previous classes were offered, as Dr. Parmley mentioned, in a quarter program. In this uh, new program, they'll all be semester classes or in the summer. So we have the fall semester, the spring semester, and the summer program. Um, so with that, I think I'll uh, open it up to any other questions or comments from anyone. This is Diana. Mary said Mary. she would like to mention a few more things, so she she's back here. Okay, super. Um, I would. Fort Mary. I just wanted to mention. I just wanted to mention that you know, Central is. Put, we have put together that associate degree online, and one thing that's been really a neat experience for me is working with students, really at a distance. I've never seen their face. 
I, I've only heard their voice on the phone or had several emails with them, but I have a student in Western Nebraska that has completed all of the library courses that is now pursuing the, the Associate of Arts degree and then will persist on to a bachelor's degree. And so it's really a neat opportunity for students that might be really at a location that they need online classes and they work very, very well. And so would really welcome any students that are out at a distance that would really need this type of a program because it does work and it's really, I know for me as an advisor, it's really fun. I might also mention um, that uh, since the program was previously in all six community colleges, if a student would like to complete their AA degree at one of the other five community colleges, then just take these six courses from us they can do that, and I probably shouldn't even say this, but I think Mid Plains also has their AA degree online, so a person could get the entire program online if they want to enroll through Mid Plains as well as us. I don't know about the other four colleges, if they have all, all of their courses, and for us, fall will be the first time we've been able to say that we've, we've had an AA completely online. Um, is there anything else, Mary, that you thought? Maybe we ought to tell them. She's here to answer questions, so if anyone has any. So, Diana and, and Mary, it's, it's Mary Jo again. I'm just wondering, when you talk about an online experience, a complete online experience, um, can you describe just a little bit what that means? Now, does, that, does the students have any meetings, face-to-face -face meetings or interactions at all face-to-face, -face, or is it all just physically uh, in front of your computer? You know, um, um, I'd like uh, to take a stab at that. Sorry, Mary, go ahead. I'll, I'll let you go ahead and take your stab first. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I um, speaking in the class and classes that I teach, um, I will say that there is a component where they meet with other people, but not necessarily me. So um, previously, I've offered an orientation session where if people wanted to get together, you know, we could help them walk through the first steps. But I think we'll be changing that so that they can walk through all of it themselves or call for assistance if they want to. The other component of the class may be that we ask you to meet with a library director or we ask you to meet with someone who's doing reference work so that you can interview people. And this actually has a twofold component. So let's say you live in western Nebraska. Um, obviously, that doesn't require you then to drive to Omaha to meet with someone there, but you can choose somebody in your own community. So it not only gives you information that you need for the class, but it helps you start building your network, which we think is a really vital component. And the library world is a small world. So uh, we really think that when you start to build those contacts, you're really starting to build contacts for uh, when you're looking for a position, uh, that you'll know some people and begin to uh, know other people in the library community. And Mary. <laughs> okay, we'll see what I can do here. For, for us with our AA degree, when we refer to that being online, uh, the student does not necessarily have to come to campus for really any courses except one. And that course right now, as we have it written, that is the biology course. And a student does need to take uh, some classes in different distribution areas such as communications, humanities, uh, science, math, uh, behavioral sciences, and then the electives, which the electives are the library courses. And Therefore, the only class that we, re we do ask students to come to campus is the biology course. And that's how we have it set up for this fall. We're offering it when, and 10 students can enroll. Uh, students do come to campus uh, one day in August, and I believe that's just to go over some lab requirements, check out materials, microscopes, <laughs> checking out microscopes, what Diana's telling me. And then, uh, at the end of the term, they'll report back to campus just for that one one meeting and to check everything back in. But that is the only one, uh, the only course that the student would be required to come to campus. One other thing as an advisor that I'd really encourage, if you have students out there that are really considering online, the thing I see as an advisor is that 
a good planning and if a student knows they're going to enroll in a fall course, enroll early because we do have some limits on how many students are in those courses at times. For example, the biology, we only have 10 spots. But uh, even more important, if a student knows they're going to take a course, don't have them wait until like three days before to sign up for the course because uh, what happens is we have to give them login information for the course and sometimes if they enroll real late, maybe even a week before, by the time that login information is out to them, there might be an assignment posted and, and it's really difficult sometimes to get um, really engaged and involved in an online course if you're in a hurry and, and struggling to get logged on. And not that it's a difficult process, but it, it just good planning is, is really essential. So I always tell students, if, you're, if you know you're going to sign up for that online course, at least, at the very least, sign up a couple weeks beforehand or more because of the course, the limits that we have on those capacities. Great advice, Mary. Plan ahead. There's <laughs> <laughs> um, a couple questions in the text chat. Uh, One of the first questions is a question that's asked, will any credit transfer to other colleges? I believe that probably means besides the UNO program, does it transfer to say Shadron, to Kearney? Is that, is that what the questioner means? That's what I guess. Uh, Mary, do you want to take a stab at that one? This is Diana. I think I can work on this one. Um, I've been actually I've been working on that this week. I did not know that Shadron and UNK had programs. So I have visited with the library people in both of those programs this week. Shadron does have an undergrad program in School Library Media, which is uh, similar to UNO. Uh, the, reason, the reason we didn't include anybody else was I didn't know anybody else, you know, I'm learning every day and I didn't know anybody else had programs. So after visiting with Shadron this week, they said that they were not interested in joining the o, old LTA program because they, the courses are, were not what they wanted students to have. But they were very impressed with our new program. So Shadron is a second opportunity for students. However, I visited with Sherry Crow at UNK just this morning. This is in fact about a quarter to ten this morning. The program at UNK is entirely a graduate program. They have a graduate endorsement for teachers. And so that program will not work with our program. Uh, I might say that UNO really kind of went out on a limb uh, for us because they're the courses, the four courses in the middle, uh, this, if you don't count the foundations course and the capstone course, the four in the middle are actually uh, 400 level courses at UNO. And so UNO had to wor work very, very closely with us. We had two full day meetings to make sure that we would offer the same course. In fact, that's why we changed course titles and content, was to match the UNO um, information, you know, the information they learned. And so UNO now transfers those courses straight across the board, which they did not do in the old LTA program. And what I'm anticipating, we just started working yesterday, but I'm anticipating that we'll be able to have the same kind of agreement with Shadron. So, in fact, I'm very excited about that. Uh, she really liked what we were doing. She said that uh, she thought that there would be plenty of courses. You know, one of the, one of the uh, hesitancies that UNO had, for example, and Shadron could have the same, is, is if they take these four courses, in, that are in the middle, will they actually um, have any courses left to take when they transfer, any library courses? And the answer is yes. They, I, they have a number of other library courses at both institutions. So I just feel real positive about the fact that, that if a student does want to go to either of these, however, the UNK thing won't work um, because their courses are all graduate level. We cannot use a 200 level course as a graduate course. But um, that's how it works. Now, both 
both Shadron and UNO have programs for certified teachers and for non-certified people. In other words, they can do an endorsement for a certified teacher uh, on the undergraduate level, which UNK, again, does on the graduate level. They also have an option, it's still in the College of Education, but it's an option for people who are not certified teachers but who want to work in a school library media setting. Um, does that help answer that question? That's a great answer. Very good. Thank you so much. And that next question? The next question has to do with the practicum or the capstone. Mm -hmm. And I think that person is asking, if they already work in a library, can they just do their practicum right where they work? You know, I think the uh, real theory there is that it's better to do something somewhere else. Um, and I don't know, you really have to check with uh, Dorothy on that to be sure. And part of that may even depend on the size of your library. If you're in a large library, you may be able to do something else within your library that's outside of your normal scope. But again, a lot of that is about building your network, building your experience, because you don't want to take your, your uh, resume to someone with the same thing that you had on it before. You want to be able to have expanded upon that. So I think the encouragement there is to find a different library in which you can do that practicum. Laura, would you like to talk a little bit about how taking these courses affects your uh, certification and, and whether or not you need to take basic skills, that kind of thing? Um, the courses will uh, fulfill basic skills requirements. and. Um, they do earn a certain number of CP credits. Um, Laura, I hate so, to interrupt. I can't hear you very well. Can you speak up or maybe get closer to the microphone? So, the uh, courses in the LIS program uh, will fulfill the basic skills requirements um, as they're currently uh, set out. And um, people will earn um, CE credits for taking the courses. So, um, yes, this is the ba this is a more in-depth program than basic skills. Uh, basic skills is meant to be uh, sort of a quick program to help people get up to speed. Uh, this is meant to be a uh, stronger, more in-depth program. Um, but yes, it would certainly fulfill the basic skills requirements. So like if you've taken these courses, or even one of these courses, it's almost like testing out of that basic skills area? Yes. Is that how you might say? Yes, except there's no test. There's no test. <laughs> <laughs> it's exactly like testing out, except there's no test. Well, and, and I would say, uh, you know, I haven't taken the basic skills classes, but my guess is that part of the difference is that this is an academic approach. So when we're talking about cataloging or uh, collection development, we're not only going to teach you those things, but we're going to teach you where to find resources for those things on an ongoing basis. So you're looking up articles and learning how to comment on them and uh, feeding back information to other people in your class as well. So would you say that's a fair part of the difference, Laura? Yes, although basic yeah. skills does try to give people um, other resources. Other resources. Right. right. Um, but basic skills is mm -hmm. mostly quicker. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I think that might be of interest to people just because some people may be wanting to get their certification um, processed. And if they've already taken an LTA class or they're planning to take an LTA class, then they would know not to sign up for a basic skills class in that area because that's the class they're taking. So Although if they want to, they still get credit <laughs> for it. <laughs> yeah, you can get double credit. Um, we don't... Reinforcing the nurse. I'm, right. I'm, I'm not going to... Refreshing. Um, I wouldn't tell people, no, you cannot take the basic skills class. I could right. tell them that if you've taken cataloging, in the LIS program, the basic skills class is likely to be pretty much um, stuff you already know then. <laughs> Are there other questions or comments? Okay, I don't think we see anything here unless uh, Dr. Parmalee or Mary Young, do you have any other comments? I 
did want to read them. She's, go ahead, Dr. Parmley. Yeah. I think I think we're okay. If um, if there's anything else we can answer, we'd be glad to. Um, I, one thing I wanted to do, if I could, is because we don't have copies of the of the new brochure, I do want to read a couple of comments from the brochure, if I could. Um, this is from a student, and it says, "I like the convenience and flexibility of the online program." The virtual classroom allowed me to continue working at my present job full-time while preparing for my next career, that of a library technical assistant. Well, she still uses the LTA language, but I think that the message is clear that what people really want is to be able to prepare for an advancement in their careers and yet do it while they're still working at the job they have now. And I think that's just such a great statement because I think it really shows that, that we're hitting the mark here. I couldn't agree more. Okay, well, thanks for uh, ending us on a positive note, Mary Jo. I think since there are no more questions, we can go ahead and end our call. We'll remind people that this will be archived, and you'll mm -hmm. receive an email uh, from Chris indicating where that will be. But we want to thank those of you who have attended, and um, hopefully you've learned a little something from this session. Anything else? Anybody else? Okay, okay. Thank you. All right. yes, thank you very much, Maria. That was very in, in, um, interesting, and hopefully we'll get a lot more people uh, in the field. Oh, you're getting applause. Oh, God, right. oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Good job, good job. All right, thank you. Um, if you have any questions, it's on the slides. Everybody's contact information is in there. The PowerPoint will be loaded up, um, I didn't get to it yet this afternoon, to the Commission SlideShare account, mm -hmm. so anybody can download it and get the information from there about the contact information and everything about the different classes. Um, off of there. I um, hope you'll join us next week when our Encompass Live will be on a database roadshow teaser. Mm -hmm. Database roadshow is coming up this summer. Get a little preview of what's mm -hmm. going to be coming with that. And don't forget that will probably be our last Encompass Live on this center of software. Um, we may be off for a few weeks as we're switching to new Microsoft Live Meeting software for producing our online sessions. Um, we'll see how that timing works out for us. <laughs> so thank you very much. Bye bye.